Okay. Oh, this is just an amazing, really, really characteristic example of a rare and fascinating entity. Did anyone get this one? Here's bone, okay? We're in the bone. What was that? Yes, good. This is clear cell chondrosarcoma, which is a really unusual entity because, again, it's one of those things that's called chondrosarcoma, but pretty much in every way looks totally different from regular chondrosarcoma. But here's pre-existing bone that's being destroyed and damaged. There's a ton of remodeling. The bone lines are really busy and overlapping. So reactive bone, it's like a, a fortress is being uh, uh, you know, surrounded by the enemy here. And then what you have out here, the tumor itself, has got a lot of different stuff going on, right? And I think it boils down to kind of three main morphologic findings. So Dr. Rowe told me, always make three, make a triad of everything. And I've, I've, I've gotten bad because I'm very verbose and I talk a lot. I've gotten away from doing triads, but I need to start making more triads when I teach. So um, number one is you get clear cells, right? And remember in pathology, when we say clear, we use that term very loosely. And sometimes that means truly optically clear, like an adipocyte, like vacuole of white space in the middle. But other times it means kind of pale pink or pale gray or something like that. So these cells, these are polygonals, what people say, or I like the term epithelioid, honestly, but these polygonal or epithelioid large cells with abundant pale or clear cytoplasm, they've got large nuclei, usually with prominent nucleoli in them, big, funny looking cells. I mean, you could easily see a biopsy of this and you could mistake this. You could think about carcinoma or all sorts of other stuff, right? You could really struggle. Um, that, that's number one, these big pale or clear cells. Number two, osteoid deposition. You get fine little strands of osteoid. And that's a pitfall too, because if you see a biopsy where you see osteoid deposition, you're going to start thinking of things like osteosarcoma. Or maybe I've seen a case of this that really on a biopsy strongly mimicked osteoid osteoma or osteoblastoma, which can have really busy, crazy patterned areas of osteoid that look kind of scary. So I've seen one where the, the a biopsy showed mostly osteoid and the clear cells were very, very sparse and only on a repeat biopsy was it more obvious. So those are challenging cases like that. And then number three, finally, the chondroid areas. Sometimes the chondroid areas really look kind of like regular cartilage, but oftentimes they're kind of mixoidy looking. So they're kind of chondromixoid looking background with variable amounts between mixoid and chondroid appearance, okay? So that's the three things. The big pale or clear cells, which is the real diagnostic key to this tumor. And then the, the osteoid and then the chondroid to mixoid background. And again, varying components. I've seen ones that had relatively small numbers of the clear cells. And then other ones like this, where it's just sheet-like. And this is probably the best example of this that I've ever seen in, um, in my, my time in soft tissue pathology. And then, oh, what about this? What about giant cells? What do we make of that? Does it mean anything? No, it doesn't mean anything. It means, yeah, it means we're in the bone, right? Anytime there's breakdown and remodeling a bone because it's a fracture, because there's a tumor there, it, giant cells are seen in, in all sorts of different bone lesions, both reactive and neoplastic, benign and malignant. So, and you can even see right here, look what it's doing. Here's some osteoid or kind of cartilage almost turning into beginnings of osteoid. And the osteoclasts are trying to break it down and remodel it because that's what the osteoclasts know to do. Is there bone? Remodel, right? They're going to break it down. So, and then here's some of the native bone. And we can tell because look, you can see the lamellar lines, the bone lines. So um, eventually I'll try to make more videos on bone pathology, but bone pathology is a lot more challenging and complicated than soft tissue pathology, I think. And again, when I have hard things that I still struggle with, I don't make videos about them because it takes a lot more work and I feel uncertainty. So I feel like um, in practice, I've seen a lot of bone pathology now, but I still find it usually quite a bit harder than soft tissue tumors um, and a lot more importance of radiology. Radiology is helpful for soft tissue for sure, but it's essential for bone really, for most things in bone. If you don't have radiology, if it doesn't make sense radiographically, um, you're going to make a big mistake. So really, really great example. I mean, this is the one to burn into your mind. And the thing is that these often arise near the epiphysis. They can be a big lytic lesion in the epiphysis, the end of the long bone. Yes, is there a question? Okay, so the question is, can I make a video about bone, like what is resorption of bone and what's woven bone versus, I'll, uh, I'll try to put that on my list of things to make. Um, 
But for now, I mean, a good example is like this. Here's lamellar bone, right? It's got lines. And then it's right here, this is woven bone. And woven bone is essentially, I think of it as always being pathological. Not always malignant, but always abnormal. That the, when the lamellar bone, when new bone is produced um, in, a, in the setting of a skeletally mature patient or in a setting outside of the growth plate or where, where normal ossification process is happening, it has these irregular um, lines of, you know, if you can, it's, it, this is one thing that it's hard to do on digital slides because I like to flip my condenser a lot and I feel like that really helps things stand out in three dimensions, things that have like lines or spaces between objects on the microscope and you can't do that with a digital slide. So for all the great things about digital pathology, that, that lack of that subtle three-dimensionality can be challenging. So when you flip the condenser there, you'll see that there are little collagen, there are little collagen strands and they're all haphazard, kind of mishmashed together. That's the way I describe it. I don't know if it's good. But you can see um, woven bone in the setting of fractures and reactive things, but also in tumoral processes too. Both benign and malignant tumors can do it. So yeah, that's a good idea. I'll, I'll have to, I just kind of feel like I feel somewhat inadequate. I feel like there's so much more, like what I need to do is go fly down to Miami um, and get Andrew Rosenberg to sit down for a day with me and teach me all that stuff. Because that's what I told him to do. He came to Arkansas. Oops, sorry, I hit the microphone. For, uh, to speak at our graduation banquet. And I said, hey, um, would you mind sitting with me? I'm doing some YouTube videos. And he's like, yeah, sure, let's do it. And he is such a dynamic, amazing teacher. And he's so incredibly uh, knowledgeable with the very subtle nuances of bone. So if you want to learn, actually, if you want to learn some of that stuff, I should have mentioned that at first. I've got a whole, uh, uh, on my channel, I've got a bone histology video. And it's Andrew Rosenberg teaching me for like an hour about embryology and about normal histology and he goes over some reactive stuff it's it's like i should actually go watch it again because there's so much i learned listening to him do that video and i i think i probably should just go and give it another watch probably i need to watch it like a couple times a year and he's got one on cartilage um histology as well so actually check that out first but um but yeah i'll look into making a video like that because i do think that that would be beneficial yes you're welcome sorry i every question you guys ask i give you way more answer than you're looking for but you probably know that already about me, so here we are. Okay, just imagine what my poor teachers had to deal with when I was a kid, or my wife. Oh, they're all very patient with me, though. 